Hi, fourth graders. We are on our unit assessment for unit six. So the next couple days we'll do our pausing points and then we will move on to unit seven. So we're gonna read vignette 10 today and answer some questions. So this is called a rice sandwich. The special kids, the one who wear keys around their necks, get to eat in the canteen. The canteen, even the name sounds important. And these kids at lunchtime go there because their mothers aren't home or home is too far away to get to. My home isn't far, but it isn't close either. And somehow I got it in my head one day to ask my mother to make me a sandwich and write a note to the principal so I could eat in the canteen too. Oh no, she says, pointing the butter knife at me as if I'm starting trouble. No, sir. Next thing you know, everybody will be wanting a bad lunch. I'll be up all night cutting bread into tiny little triangles. This one with mayonnaise, this one with mustard. No pickles on mine, but mustard on one side, please. You kids just like to invent more work for me. But Nenny says she doesn't want to eat at school ever because she likes to go home with her best friend Gloria, who lives across the schoolyard. Gloria's mama has a big color TV, and all they do is watch cartoons. Kiki and Carlos, on the other hand, are patrol boys. They don't want to eat at school either. They like to stand out in the cold, especially if it's raining. They think suffering is good for you ever since they saw that movie 300 Spartans. I'm no Spartan and hold up an anemic wrist to prove it. I can't even blow up a balloon without getting dizzy. And besides, I know how to make my own lunch. If I ate at school, there'd be less dishes to wash. You would see me less and less and like me better. Every day at noon, my chair would be empty. Where is my favorite daughter, you would cry. And when I came home finally at 3 p.m., you would appreciate me. Okay, okay, my mother says after three days of this. And the following morning, I get to go to school with my mother's letter and a rice sandwich because we don't have lunch meat. Mondays or Fridays, it doesn't matter. Mornings always go by slow, and this day especially. But lunchtime came finally, and I got to get in line with the stay-at-school kids. Everything is fine until the nun who knows all the canteen kids by heart looks at me and says, You, who sent you here? And since I am shy, I don't say anything. Just hold out my hand with the letter. This is no good, she says, till Sister Superior gives the okay. Go upstairs and see her. And so I went. Sorry about that. All right, so I had to wait for two kids in front of me to get hollered at. One because he did something in class, the other because he didn't. My turn came and I stood in front of the big desk with holy pictures under the glass whilst the Sister Superior read my letter. It went like this. Dear Sister Superior, please let Esperanza eat in the lunchroom because she lives too far away and she gets tired. As you can see, she is very skinny. I hope to God she does not faint. Thanking you, Mrs. E. Cordero. You don't live far away, she says. You live across the boulevard. That's only four blocks, not even. Three, maybe. Three long blocks away from here. I bet I can see your house from my window. Which one? Come here. Which one is your house? And then she made me stand up on a box of books and point. That one, she said, pointing to an, a row of ugly three flats. The ones even the raggedy men are ashamed to go into. Yes, I nodded, even though I knew that wasn't my house and I started to cry. I always cry when nuns yell at me, even if they're not yelling. Then she was sorry and said I could stay just for today, not tomorrow or the day after. You go home. And I said, yes, and could I please have a Kleenex? I had to blow my nose. In the canteen, which was nothing special, lots of boys and girls watched while I cried and ate my sandwich. The bread already greasy and the rice cold. Okay, so for reading today, you're going to... Summarize this quote in one sentence. So reread this quote here, and in one sentence, tell me what it says. And then who is speaking? So who says this quote? Same thing for number three. Summarize this quote in one sentence. What's happening? Who's speaking that quote? Number five, same thing. Summarize this quote. What does this quote mean? And who is speaking? 
In the letter to Sister Superior, Esperanza's mother writes something that is incorrect English. What does she say that is incorrect? So looking at this letter here, something in here is not proper grammar, proper English. So reread it and choose the one that is not correct English. Number seven, what does Esperanza want in this vignette? What is her, what is her goal? What is she trying to get? Does she achieve it? Does she get it? Number nine, there is a common saying, the, green, the grass is always greener on the other side. What do you think this might mean? So the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Think about what greener grass might mean and why is it on the other side of the fence? Somewhere else the grass is greener. What does that mean? And then how do you think that saying could apply to what we just read? Okay, so the grass is always greener on the other side. What does that mean? And how does that apply to vignette 10? How does that apply to Esperanza in this vignette? All right, for skills, the same vignette, vignette 10, you can reread it. You're going to reread this specific paragraph and write one example of dialogue. So one thing that is being spoken by a character. You're going to write an example of a pronoun. So pronouns are words that we use in replace of people's names. So pick one from the passage. And then we have two writing responses. So number three, you're going to write at least three sentences to answer the question below and use details in the text to support your answer. So you're going to tell me, how do Esperanza's feelings about the canteen change from the beginning to the end? So think about how does she feel in the first paragraph about staying for lunch at the canteen, and how does she feel in the last paragraph? Give me three sentences to show me that and use evidence from the text. Number four, same thing, three sentences. Use details from the text. You're going to tell me why did her feelings change? So right here, they changed about the canteen. Why did they change? How does she feel after her conversation with her mother? And how does she feel after her conversation with Sister Superior? So think about her feelings from the beginning to the end. And as always, use those evidence from the text to support your answer. All right, that is all for today. Please get on Zoom if you need any help, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye, fourth grade.